I'd like to focus on one verse from the pen of the Apostle Paul, found in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, in which he wrote, Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Now, there's a difference between loving the Lord and loving his appearing, obviously. There are, I think, every Christian loves the Lord, but loving his appearing is something different. It's waiting and watching for him to come. And Paul said that there was a special crown for people who loved his appearing. And you'll notice here that he speaks about the Lord as the righteous judge. He'd known his fair share of unrighteous judges. And in fact, he should have been set free long before he ended up in Rome. But they kept kicking the can down the road, and eventually Paul was beheaded in Rome because of these unrighteous judges who were not prepared to take a stand and say, the man is innocent, set him free. I was thinking about three famous trials and how they were all shams. And uh, the first one I wanted to focus on was the famous Scopes trial. John Scopes, who actually wasn't a science teacher, he was a, a popular coach, although he had taught a few science classes. And um, the state of Tennessee had passed a law that it was illegal to teach evolution. The uh, theory, shall we say, from uh, goo to you, from nothing to everything. And... Uh, so the ACLU had advertised looking for someone willing to set things up so that it could be brought to trial and it could be found unconstitutional. So there's a photo of the town fathers in this little burg of, of Dayton, Tennessee, who wanted to get some attention. They wanted to get some free advertising for their town, and they thought this would be perfect. And there's a picture of them all gathered in uh, the Robinson's Drug Store in the town of Dayton, scheming out a plan to fake this trial. And so John Scopes was brought up, and Clarence Darrow, the famous defense attorney, he wanted Scopes to be convicted because he wanted it to go to the higher court and to get a bigger splash. In fact, he was convicted, but then the judge uh, released him on a technicality. The thing was a total hoax, and uh, it was intended to play out the way it did. And then, of course, the second famous trial that was also a hoax was the case of Norma McCorvey, who was the Jane Roe of the Roe versus Wade trial, in which she purported that she had been gang raped and as a result was pregnant, and she couldn't get a, an abortion in the state of Texas. She couldn't afford to travel anywhere else, and so it eventually worked its way up to the Supreme Court, and uh, even though she never did get an abortion, she bore the child and then gave it up for adoption. This, again, was a hoax. Uh, she was not gang raped. There was no uh, no truth to that idea, and again, Bill Clinton came up with this famous line about safe, legal, and rare. It's far from rare, as you know. Perhaps 60 million babies aborted in the United States since Roe v. Wade in 1970. Well, the third and, of course, by far the greatest hoax, the greatest false trial in history is the trial of the Lord Jesus. And the most unjust statement that was ever made is found in John 19, verse 6. And we read that when the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out saying, Crucify! Crucify! Pilate said to them, You take him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. You try to make sense of the two halves of that sentence. You take him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. We know that behind it all, of course, was the permissive will of God, allowing 
men to take his son and hang him on a tree. And we're just so thankful that in spite of the fact that the Lord Jesus had this, first of all, a sham trial before Annas and Caiaphas, and then before Pilate, where there was no charge brought. When he asked, well, what's the charge? They said, well, if he wasn't guilty, we wouldn't have brought him to you. And, and there was no charge. There was no evidence. And yet they railroaded it through and uh, took him out to die. But how thankful we are that through this, God provided a savior. And God himself is going to be a righteous judge who will judge righteous judgment. And more than that, he will manifest his grace and mercy to us. None of us deserves a crown for simply waiting and looking for the Lord Jesus to come back. And yet God, in his loving kindness and mercy, is looking forward to lavishing his kindness upon us. Where sin abounded, grace superabounds. And we're thankful that God is not only a righteous judge, he's merciful and kind and loving and lavish in his grace, which he is going to pour on all who will receive his Son as Savior. <laughs>